Hey, let's talk about static and dynamic binding. All right. So there are two types of binding that you talk about: static and dynamic binding. Now, what this means is, when do we identify what something is? At compile time or at runtime? So let me give you a couple examples. We have two classes here: the person class and the student class. All students are people. And a person can talk, and when they do, they say hi. And when a student talks, they say, hey, so. Right, so there's a difference between the two. Now, I can make people and students a few different ways. I could say person P equals a new person. I can say, oh, let's make a student now. How about student S equals a new student. And I can also say person, now what we'll do, Q for question mark. Q equals a new student. Because remember, all students are people, so it's okay to say that. What I can't do, I can't say student X equals a new person. I can't do that. So let's put a big line through it. And the reason we can't do that is not all people are students. So I can't talk about a student and then have you found out it's actually a 75-year-old person. They're not a student. But I could be talking about a person and be like, ah, oh, this person is Joe, this cool guy. And you go, oh, he goes to Malvern, he's a student. You say, okay, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Talk about a student who's a student, a person who's a person. Great. So the question is, when does the program treat this, like, a, or sorry, this guy like a person, or when does it treat him like a student? Well, the short and quick answer is at compile time. So when it's building the program and making sure that it works, he's a person. But at runtime, when you're actually saying run the program, he's a student. Now, this gets a little dicey in a couple of different situations. So let's take one to begin with. Let's say I write something like, uh, you know, in my main program, and there's our stuff, I'm going to say uh, q.talk. Now, uh, the first thing that's going to happen when I go to compile this, it's going to say, what's q? Q's a person. Can people talk? It's going to check up here and says, yes, people can talk, no problem. So in this case, we're getting bound to the, the person class. However, when we run the program, because I'm dereferencing, I go Q dot, we're going to go to the actual student and talk. So I run this program, the output's going to be, hey, so. Now, that seems pretty straightforward. What, though, if we did something a little different, and I said we had two methods, so how about we go, uh, test, well, let's call it test one, because I don't want to write more words, I'm lazy. Test one is a method that takes in a person, x, and prints, hello, governor, hello, governor. That's kind of strange. And then I have another one, test two. Test two that takes in a student x, and that just prints yo yo yo. Well, this is a little bit of a different scenario, and here's why. Say we're back in our main, all right, and in our main method we say, uh, let's see, oops, sorry, both of these are going to get the same name. Test one. So this is overloaded, meaning that I have two methods with the same name defined differently. The only thing dis uh, that distinguishes between them is this one takes a person, this one takes a student. So if I go over here and I say test one, and I send Q, it's going to say, oh, Q is a person. So run this version. So I'm going to get LL governor, not yo, yo, yo. Even though Q is really a student, 
the decision to go to this method happens at compile time, not run time. So I'm going to say, hello, governor. Something you got to deal with. Now, that said, Q still is a student. So if I say Q dot talk, he's still going to say, hey. So, so that's a foray into static and dynamic binding. Bye now.